Hello, members of the Pflugerville Public Library. I hope you're joining me to learn more about kids sewing. This is our third craft of the season. It's Miss Jan from the Pflugerville Quilt Guild. And today's offering is a sunglasses pouch. Isn't this cute? We have done these before, but they looked a little different. This time we've added a flap that closes and for a buttonhole, I've added ribbons for you to make a little loop to catch a button. So today, our new skill is sewing on a button. And look, I have sunglasses in there. It really works. Here. Now your kit will come with the instructions that say sunglasses pouch case. And the back will have a diagram with the steps like I show you usually. Step one, step two, step three. And this is what the kit looks like. It will be a baggie with the instructions. It will have a button. There's a button in there. Can you see that? There's a button in there. The instructions will be in there. And it's several different very cute patterns I'm going to be working on this one that's puppy dogs. Now, when you pull the, the uh, fabric out, it is already finished for you. It has been shaped and all the edges are finished. Remember, that's not raw where it ravels. Everything's been finished. The inside of the pouch is soft flannel. This is fuzzy and it'll help protect your glasses. Now, when you pull this little uh, pouch out, it's going to be folded for you. This is, I think you can see, this is three inches on the side, three inches on the side. And uh, this bottom part's gonna fold up that three inches and this little curve is going to be your fastening flap. Now, it isn't sewn yet, so you'll be able to hold it open. And there is a little whiskery thing. This is a tailor's tack. This is what people who sew will do on something where they want to remember to put something. Now on this one, we're going to sew a button on. This is the button that's going to hold the closures together. And you need to do this first. It's the easiest way to do it is with it open where you can reach the back and the front at the same time. Now I've already threaded my needle. There's my threaded needle. It has a knot. I hope you remember how to make the knot. You make a loop, push the end through and pull. There's a little knot right there. I'm not sure you can see it. Now here's my button. This one's kind of small. I tried to include large buttons in the craft kit. But what I'm going to do is where the little whiskers have the center right here. See that? I'm going to hold the button there. Well, actually, let's do this. Where we see the little tailor's tack on the inside, let's push the needle up through there and make sure our thread is going to, yep, it's going to stick. And then we'll get the button started by putting the needle through one hole, let the button fall down to the fabric. There we go. And, oh, now don't slide around. This is gonna be tricky holding two things together. The, the little thread will, look, the little thread will keep it from going anywhere. But I want to come up through this hole and go down through this hole. There, and pull, pull, till my, there. And you know what? Now that I have my button where I want it, I'm going to get rid of my tailor's tack. I'm going to trim it off so that my threads don't get mixed up. There you go, there. There, now my tailor, my tailor's tack is gone. 
Now, I have one loop holding my button on. That really isn't strong enough. We want to do this about four or five times. Each time you get two threads going through holding the button on. If you go through five times, that's going to be ten threads. So to get started, I'm going to look at the back and that is where I pushed through the first time. There! And it shows me where to come up through the fabric. I'm hoping you can see that. And you pull till the, all the thread comes through. Check and make sure you didn't leave any loops. And now we go back, down, and pull to the back. Here we go, we're gonna come up again. I'm gonna look to see, this is where I put my needle. Well, see, even, yeah. Always make sure your thread is smooth. See, even Mrs. Jan is having trouble with that. Now, I can guess, here we go. I want to go through this hole right here. There we go. I wiggle the needle around till it goes through the hole. There we go. There. Now we're up at the top. We just push back down and pull. You don't want any loose loops. So make sure your two threads have pulled through. Okay, this time I'm going to try not to look. I'm going to hold my finger where it needs to be and I'm going to push the needle up next to my finger and see if I can make it come through. Let's see. See, I want you to, sh I want you to see that you sort of have to be patient with yourself when you're learning something new, like putting on a... Okay, I'm going to cheat and figure out where it goes. It goes right there. Yay, that was it. Pull. Now see we've done this three times. That means there's six threads. Let's do one more. Hello. See I don't want that to happen. There. There. And one more. Come on Miss Jen. Let's show them how easy it is. There we go. I can see it. There. Up. No loops. See how it's nice and smooth? No loops. And that was about my fourth time. That means there's eight threads holding that button on. And I'm going to be happy with that. Now on the, out, on the back side, I'm going to catch my threads like this and do the slip knot trick. There's my loop. I don't know how well you're able to see this because I forgot and used matching thread. I should have used a thread that would show. There's one loop. I'm going to do it again. Catch those little threads. Go through. And pull. There. Nice and tight. Two little slip knots. We're going to trim the thread short. There. Now this is how you get ready for the second half. You turn up your three inches on the side and I can measure it from this measuring thing. And to make sure it doesn't move around on me, I am going to close the flap and wrap my ribbon around. This is how you can get it to hold. You wrap the ribbon around. This is how they used to hold old folders together. And when you finish this, you can actually put a knot in your uh, ribbons to make a loop that will slide over the a button just the right size. Kind of like I did on our sample one. See how I made a, a little loop? And it'll slide over my button. There we go. I left enough ribbon for everybody to, whether you had a big button or a little button, but this will, this will hold it together. Even with, with glasses in there, it will hold it together. You just wrap it a couple of times. This is in the olden days. This is how they held um, folders together. Now, this will hold this together. And the only part you want to sew is the front and back of the side. Now, I'm going to use that same thread. And I'm going to do our little loop. Push through. And 
here's where you have a choice. You can do a very tight up and down running stitch or now I'm going to start on the inside and hide my knot right there. Let me get that knot inside there. And I'm going to do a overcast. Remember that's the one where you come from the back and the closer the little stitches are together the more secure your pouch will be. And if you can see I'm making sure I catch both sides. Now actually we're sewing through four layers so you may want to do this very carefully stitch by stitch. There we go. And now my ribbons are getting in the way. <laughs> there. Okay. See how nice and neat that is? And this is red thread against white. And, and yet it still looks pretty good. All right. And you want to make sure you're not leaving any loops. And we're going to sew. It's three inches. We'll do our overcast to the end and tie a good knot, just like we did when we were finishing off the uh, button. And that is how you will get a finished case. And I want to show you on mine. I'll take the glasses out. I'll show you. I used black thread on this and I did the overcast stitch. It's kind of decorative. It looks sort of pretty. There we go. Both sides, just three inches. Nice overcast. And see how well it holds? I, you can see the stitches on the inside and you can test them out. You can test them out. They're holding together. You can see the back in the front of this um, finished shape for the pouch. It stays together and you see see what I did? I anchored I anchored my little ribbons and made a loop and I actually stitched them down so they so the bow wouldn't come loose. There we go. But this one can be the same way. I can decide when I'm finished, maybe I need to tie my knot right here. Test it out to make sure my loop is going to be. And that'll give me a permanent loop that'll act like a buttonhole. Or if I decide I don't want to do that, you can just make it a, a wraparound and you can do, after you put your glasses in, you can do one, one, <laughs> one wrap that way and one wrap that way. Ta-da! If you want to, you can tie it. Ta-da! There. And it'll hold your glasses until you're, uh, ready to use them and then you just pull unloose and ta-da now if you don't wear glasses or you don't use sunglasses you can this will make a nice little pencil case you can put a little notepad in there you can carry something you that you like having around with you it'll keep it nice and protected the flannel is soft let's get rid of those threads there you go this really is about three simple steps you add the button while the fabric is flat. You fold it the way it was pre-folded for you. Remember, it's three inches on a side, and you're going to either use a uh, overcast stitch or an in and out stitch, and that will be your sunglasses case. Ta-da! And thank you for joining me. This has been Miss Jen for Kids Sewing at the Pflugerville Public Library.